We talked about um, algorithms that work on shallow circuit quantum computers or noisy quantum computers. In other words, quantum computers which don't have a long coherence time. And they have implementation difficulties. In this module, we will mainly talk about algorithms that assume a perfect quantum computer and uh, that require very high quality qubits and uh, that uh, allow you to run arbitrarily long algorithms. These are the kind of algorithms that can give you like polynomial or exponential speedups compared to best known classical algorithms. So these are what we call coherent protocols. Coherence, not because they don't necessarily interact with the environment. We might do some measurement as part of the protocol, but what we mean by coherent here is that we assume this perfection, level of perfection of the quantum computer that I mentioned. And what's very important to most of these algorithms is that their inputs and outputs are all quantum states. This is slightly different than what we have seen so far. Because when you think about quantum annealing, you are actually preparing something classical, and then you get some classical output. If you think about QAOA, it's the same story. Now here, it's very important that your inputs and outputs are quantum states, because if you use state preparation, or you want to understand what the final output is, and you want to do tomography, that can kill all the, all the speed up that you get from the protocol itself. So it's a slightly different uh, paradigm. But for, before we uh, look at uh, the mo one of the most important building blocks, the quantum Fourier transform, let's take a look at what its classical variant does. So classically, we have some vector, which for instance describes a time series. And by applying Fourier transformation on it, we get, say, the, the, the frequency domain decomposition of this signal. So you go from the time domain to the frequency domain. And the way you do it is by, by applying this uh, exponential operation for every single uh, element on, on xj. And this reveals the, the frequency structure. As you are going to see in, in quantum phase estimation, this is what we use to, uh, to go from, say, an amplitude encoding to uh, basis encoding. So it's very useful for, for a whole bunch of different things when you, when you put it in, in the right context. Now, the quantum Fourier transformation achieves exactly this operation. So now you have the, the quantum state um, encoding x in amplitude encoding, so the elements of the, the x vector are encoding in the amplitude. And you create a new vector y by applying the quantum Fourier transformation, where the elements or the, or the amplitudes uh, in this new vector are exactly these elements that you would do in a classical Fourier transformation. To, to keep things simple, I assume that the, the number of elements in this vector, capital N, is some power of 2. It's 2 to the n. So the actual transformation is <clears throat> surprisingly simple. So we are looking for some unitary that performs this transformation, right? And we can create this binary expansion of, of a number. So the binary expansion is, is just uh, basically it's, it's uh, digits expanded in, in, the, in the binary basis. And if we do that, then we can see the, the actual structure of how number is transformed, and that's exactly what we are going to do. So this will be the Fourier transformation that we are looking for. So I just rewrote whatever was here, uh, here. So this is what we want to get at the end of it. And we are going to, to rearrange things here with just some basic algebra to see what is the actual operation we have to apply. So now we expand the k uh, basis vector, or the label of the basis vector, in, in this binary expansion, right? So in, in basically in this form. So now we, uh, have, we go uh, from 0 to 1 for all of these elements. So I'm expanding this sum into some uh, n bits. And here are the n bits describing uh, k. And I'm also uh, expanding a little bit this part, so k over 2n in this, in this binary form, in, in this form. So there, there were two things going on in this step, these two. Then, when you look at just this form here, so whatever is here in the exponential, that we can change it into, into a product. So, uh, so now we can look at the product going from l to uh, uh, l equals 1 to, to n. And basically, I'm moving this, this summation out 
and make it into this, this uh, product. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this product in front of the sum. So that's what's here. So now you have the, the product in front. You have the summation, KL. Now L got, a, got an index. That's why you don't have them explicitly written down. So KL goes from 0 to, uh, to 1. And you still have this binary expansion here uh, over the basis factors. And, and I didn't change this. So this is the same what you saw here. And now if we expand this very last sum, which is just 0 and 1, then we can read out what is the actual algorithm. Because what you have here is now for the, for the 0 cat, and the 0 1 for each of these KL, you have K equal 0 here, which means that this whole phase is going to be 1. So it does not have an, it, well, its amplitude is 1. And then for the excited state, the, the one cat, we will have the, the actual corresponding uh, value with this set to 1, which is just 2 pi i times x times 2 to the minus l, l going from 1 to n. And so this is equivalent to what we started with. And we can read out the circuit from this, uh, the circuit from this one because this is just a couple of conditional rotations. So these will be the rotations that we want. And uh, as you can see, it's the typical structure of a condi uh, conditional operation where we separate uh, uh, the two parts into two separate sections. So that's it. Um, in principle, it's very simple, but it's, it's very resource intensive. You need lots of qubits, and eventually you end up with a large number of uh, gates, even, even though it is a simple structure. And therefore, you can't really do it on these shallow, circuit, shallow uh, circuit quantum computers that we have talked about so far. But you definitely need something that's robust to noise and that's large scale.